Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. And since I did the last one, the last one was all about, whoa, is it ever going to rain? We've got drought, things are dying off. It has rained. And uh, we received, well, possibly nine, maybe even 10 mil of rain in the last week. And really uh, rained yesterday, which was fantastic. So all the farmer Twitter friends I have, we've all been posting pictures of our rain gauges, how much I've got in mind. Some people have had 14 mil, um, but I'm very happy that we had the 10 mil and it has transformed the potential for the farm, which I'll go into more detail in a moment. But I wanted to bring you into here. Now, um, two things to see here. One, this is where we, this is the worst bit of wheat I've got on the farm, or almost. It's, it's, it's debatable because I've got lots of bits of rubbish wheat. Um, it stops there because that's where the drill ran out when we were uh, putting the final bit of winter wheat that turned into spring wheat because we put it in in February, March time. That's where the seed ran out. So that's why there's no seed where I'm standing. It's just weeds. Um, that over there is actually the mustard we put in as a sort of cover crop to, to root to try and break up the soil structure. We're going to have a look at that in a moment. But what I really want to show you is my rubbish wheat. Now, it's a bit windy actually, so I think we might, we might just change this. Now this wheat has never really got going since we put it in the ground. It had everything against it, late drilled, and then it flooded out. If you remember, we had all that rain in uh, end of February, March, February being the wettest uh, month on record, and it had no chance. So we have spent nothing on this crop in terms of chemicals. It's had no weed killer, had fertilizer, a reduced amount, because I just wasn't sure what the potential was. And then I was just going through it last week and I saw this. If I just pick, uh, pick a, a piece of wheat up, we suddenly had an attack of yellow rust. You can sort of see there, um, there's some stain in there. Now, it was much more virulent when I saw it at the beginning of the week. And what you're trying to do uh, with wheat, the yield comes from the flag leaf. This is the flag leaf just coming out here. I'll show on a better one with an ear. I'll if I pull this one up. Yeah, so there we go. So that's, there's an ear coming out. That ear coming up, and that is turned the flag leaf. That's the last leaf. And then you have the ear coming out as well. So this is all a bit behind this. But there's 45% of the yield comes from the um, flag leaf. And the 25% comes from the ear itself, I, you know, photosynthesis to actually put bulk in the grain. It's about 20% from that leaf, the one below the flag leaf. So what you're trying to do is to stop any disease getting on those critical parts of the plant that do put the yield into the wheat. And I came in here, suddenly saw this yellow rust has appeared. It's had no fungicides on it at all, and it's suddenly going yellow. And by that afternoon, we had put a fungicide on it. Uh, because there was forecast rain, but it would just have, that rust would have just wiped this crop out. So you tend to spend around 150 to 200 pounds per acre on the chemical treatments, including herbicide, fungicide, etc., growth regulators, on each crop of winter wheat per year. That's the sort of basic spend. But on this crop, we've spent nothing. There was did it have potential to get to harvest? There's been no herbicides in here. We had a little bit of Roundup took out the grass weeds before we drilled it about October time. And it's sort of pretty clean really. So there was, and because there wasn't any disease pressure, we didn't know the potential, we spent nothing more on it. So when I saw that rust come in, that would have wiped this crop out completely. Um, so you've just decimated it, it goes right through it. Um, varieties break down to fungus uh, attacks and Skyfall is getting much more susceptible. We'll have to change variety probably next year. And uh, so we came with the fungicide at about 10 pounds an acre or thereabouts. So I now have a little bit of money invested in this crop because I think it has potential because we had that rain. Right, now I just want to have show you just what's happening with the cover crop over here. So here's that mustard crop I spun on uh, the other day, the rain came perfectly to get it going, and then unfortunately, during the right through May, it just sat there. Um, but it's there, it, and it's doing what it's meant to do, but it's meant to be way taller, but it's just starting to flower. And this should be two, three foot tall, really. Um, this is really short, 
So it's not really going to do the job it was meant to do is put big roots down, open up the soil. We'll see how it goes over the next few weeks, but um, oh, it's so frustrating that we didn't get that rain in May to really make it go because we had such a good establishment. Anyway, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump on the motorbike and then just take you around a little bit more of the tour because the linseed has changed dramatically in the last week or so. so. I wanted to take you down here just to show you how the cracks are appearing in the soil. You can sort of see here how the ground is really starting to crack up. There you go. I could almost lose a wheel in there. And that's just the drought. It's just the, the, the crop sucking the mo moisture out of the ground. About 90% of um, the water is brought out by the plant, you actually lose. It doesn't take it up, it only uses about 10% for growth, but um, that's how it functions. And without water, you get a very dodgy crop, as you here. This is all droughted out. But what I want to show you is this linseed over here. Now, complete change in the linseed. Just try and find my mark. But this crop now is finished flowering. I mean, there's the odd flowers here in the tram line, just where the tractors sort of run over it. But it is a full crop, and now it's starting to do its term senescing. So where it's now getting ready, it's it's trying to fill those uh, seed heads. They're maturing, and it sort of gives you a wake-up call after all the grief of the rain and the and floods and then drought this crop is getting ready for harvesting oh my lord so that's why you know, we sort of ended up having the combine service we've got more to do on that um, and I'm going to have to be clearing out the grain sheds etc and you can see this ground is all cracked up as well but it's a lovely even crop weed control has been absolutely brilliant uh, this year I think it was here about two weeks ago I just did a film uh, on my iPhone just to say this is in full flower how it's come back two weeks later now look at it completely all the flowering gone there's a buzzard uh, coming to have a little look what we're up to what a great sight probably can't see it on this camera but uh, as I say I just love the evenness of this crop and it's still standing everything's looking good and it's really getting ready for harvest right let's go and have a look at some wheat just over there Now this wheat here, completely different. This is where it was all droughting out. And will it come back? I don't know. What I like to see here is as I was explaining in that other field, that you've got 25% of the yield comes from the ear and 40% from the flag leaf. And this, after this rain, there is just a chance, you see that's clean, that's had a full fungicide program in here, hasn't got that rust issue at the moment. Those leaves are just dying out because of drought really. But is that ear, and I think we've had enough moisture that that ear will emerge properly and look more like that one over there where we're going to get a crop. So yeah, we're quite excited that the farm is basically transformed after that little bit of rain. Right now, I just want to take you some wheat over there now, which is much more mature than this. It's stuff we drilled back in October. There we go. You can see this wheat looks completely different just because of that drill date and it's clean. So what, what the difference is here between that one we spent nothing on this one we have spent money on and you can just see there's no sign of any sort of rust these like these have just sort of died out because they're right at the bottom of the plant that is a very healthy plant and we but you can tell it has just been slightly drowned this is known as strong land which means it's got a higher clay content it's still cracking up so that's say it's got a clay content in it and that is it's reluctant to fully extend out um, but it will. I think now we've had that sort of nine mil of rain and there is small rain forecast this week. 
I was trying to think, how can I explain um, some of the questions that were asked uh, on the previous one I went about the drought. We said, well, one, why don't you just uh, irrigate? Well, you need an extraction license to irrigate. It's very capital intensive. Well, one, it's near impossible to get an extraction license because of the water issues we've got in this country. And two, if you have got one, it's very capital intensive with the reels and you put uh, pipes all around the farm. And it's marginal generally uh, whether you get a return from investment on a, on a crop of wheat. You do, if, you, if you're growing really water hungry crops like potatoes, carrots, sometimes sugar beet, but just a different crop. Wheat isn't normally one you get a return on from irrigation, but it, the, the sums just don't add up. Other question was, well, why don't you just use the sprayer and uh, put um, water on like that? Well, let's, for ease of math, let's say we just had 10 mil of rain. 10 mil of rain is 10 litres per square metre of rain, of water. If you have a hectare, that is 100 metres by 100 metres, 10,000 square metres. Each one needs 10 litres to get 10, 10 mil of rain. Suddenly you need 100,000 litres of water to put on 10 mil. We, with the sprayer, are at 200 litres per hectare. So I would have to go through the crop 500 times with the sprayer to get 10 mil of rain, just out the question. Um, so that's why you want the rainfall. And to quantify it in financial terms, what's it mean? Well, the output, the arable output, nothing to do with profit, just the, the what I receive for growing the crop from this farm is around 110,000 pounds or thereabouts. I would suggest that uh, nine mil of rain probably added 10,000 pounds to that. So that one bit of rain this week, 10,000 pounds to output. There is another 18 mil forecast coming later this week. It, this is key time for yield. That will sort us out for harvest. I am overjoyed, as you'd imagine, because that probably will go to 15 to 18,000 increase in output from those two critical bits of rain when we were looking um, down the barrels of a drought um, at the end of May. It's, it's completely changed today's, I think it's, it's 7th of, of June, uh, so completely changed. So there you go, that's what's going on on Harry's farm. Um, a regular update because the crops are really changed at this time of year, so I might well be back in another week uh, or possibly two weeks. We'll just see how the farm is looking. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing, and I'll see you all very soon.